Hey guys, this is Mr. Herbst here, and today's focus is going to be on genetics. Uh, more specifically, we are going to introduce genetics, and we are going to focus on this guy right here, Gregor Mendel. What did he do, and why was he so important? Now, the central dogma, or the big question we're going to answer in this unit, is why do children look like their parents? For example, why does this kid look like his parents? Why does this kid look like his parents? Etc. And the answer is... It's because of this thing called genetics. And genetics is the scientific study of heredity. Now, heredity is a new vocab word we're going to toss at you. I'm going to put a star next to it. Heredity means the passing down of traits from parents to offspring via or using genes and chromosomes. This picture on the right, you may possibly recognize these things right here. These are, you guarantee you heard this word, those are chromosomes. Those chromosomes right there all contain DNA, as we discussed in previous units. On that DNA is genes, and in those genes is the, the code for what you look like. Now I want to take a second to focus on this guy right here, Gregor Mendel, one of the most important scientists in all of biology. Why was he so important? Well, because he was the father of modern genetics. What does that mean? Well, he was the guy that sort of, um, he didn't invent genetics because Mother Nature invented genetics, but he was the first guy that really understood it and kind of explored scientifically how it worked. He studied traits in his garden. Uh, more specifically, he used these pea plants, peas like you eat. Why did he use pea plants? Seems kind of weird. We'll go ahead and focus on that in a little bit. So more about Mendel, uh, why was he so important? Well, he was the first person to succeed in predicting how traits are passed from one generation to another. So for example, how are they passed from mother to baby, um, from parents to offspring? And I want to throw another vocab word at you right here. I'm going to put a star next to it. That is trait. What is a trait? Well, it is what an organism looks or behaves like. For example, I'm a pretty uh, loud, energetic dude. Um, that is one of my traits. I have brown hair, and I have brown eyes, and I have light-colored skin. All of those things that I mentioned are all traits that I have. So why was Mendel so important? Well, as I previously mentioned, he, he was the father of modern genetics. He uh, was very important in this because he studied one trait at a time. And more specifically, he was one of the first to actually use the scientific method. So he used uh, math to analyze his data. And he also looked at multiple traits and used multiple trials. So he didn't just do this thing once, he tested it over and over and over, which is really good science. And why did he use peas? Well, I uh, talked about that in a second. Peas, right? Seems kind of weird. Well, mainly because they are very quick growing. A pea plant can shoot up from the ground in, uh, you know, just a matter of weeks. And also, peas, much like us human beings, have lots of different traits. So lots of pea plants look very different. You can have um, seeds that are round, so you can have seeds that are wrinkled, you can have yellow seeds, green seeds, you can have fl uh, purple flowers, white flowers, you can have uh, green pods, you can have yellow pods, you can have tall plants and you can have short plants. And actually more specifically what he found out is that the, some of those traits are what's called dominant over one another and some of those traits are what's called recessive, where they get masked by the dominant trait right here. So what did Mendel find out? Well, he sort of came up or discovered uh, the names for these things called genes and alleles. A gene is another vocab word I'm going to toss at you. I'm going to put a star next to it. One of the most important things you're going to want to know in this unit. A gene is a section of DNA that determines a trait. Uh, Mendel called those things factors, but since then, since Mendel's time, we now thus call the same thing genes. And another vocab word I'm going to toss at you is an allele. It's a particular form of a trait. Let me explain that. Take a look at this thing right here. That is a palm tree. And so is this. This is a palm tree. At first glance, what do you look at the what can you see is the difference between these two? Well, this guy right here is a lot taller than this guy. This guy's pretty short. Um, let's assume that these are both fully grown. Well, the gene that we're dealing with is the gene for height. 
And another important thing to know, one thing that we are going to discuss a lot in this unit, is that we have two alleles for every gene. So, what does that mean? Well, if this guy is super tall, that means that he, we're going to assign him capital letter T. And this one right here is really short, so we're going to assign that one the lowercase t. So, he ha those are the, that's one of the two alleles that he has, or that tree has for height. Now, what is the other allele? Well, it can either be big T, or it could be a little t. So, for example, he could either be big T, big T, or big T, little t. This guy right here is so short that that one there is going to be little t, little t. What I'm saying here is that where I talked about how sometimes one allele can mask another, well, in this case, the big T right here is masking the little t right here. So we only end up seeing the big T, and the big T is the allele for being really tall. So this tree right here is thus going to be very tall. This tree right here has two alleles for being short, thus is only contains the alleles for being short, thus will be short. So more importantly, we get one allele from each of our parents. Makes sense, right? One from mom, one from dad. So if we are going to talk again about palm trees, uh, if we are big T, big T, which again, that was that guy was tall, uh, that's what we call being homozygous dominant. This is another really important term to know, so I'm going to put a star next to it. Homo, this word right here, is a Latin word which means same. And so this guy here, you can sort of think, well, he's the same for those two alleles right there. And more specifically, he has both of the dominant alleles. So he has big T and big T. This one here, if, if that tree had been big T, little t, is what we call heterozygous. And hetero means other. So you can see kind of why being big T, little t, why we call that heterozygous. And finally, homozygous recessive, where, again, homo means same, and this one here, or this tree right here, would be little t, little t. That would be the short tree. Little t, little t uh, means that he is homo. He has the same alleles, but they are both recessive, so they're both small. And I'm going to put stars next to all these because these are terms that we are going to uh, use a lot more in this unit. Now, another thing that I want to make sure that we understand is that sometimes we don't just assign t's. For example, eye color, maybe we could assign B for blue or uh, B for brown. Or if we, uh, me, I'm very energetic. So maybe we assign big E for being really energetic. I don't know. But sometimes what I'm saying is that we always, we don't use T every time for alleles. And finally, this brings me to my last slide. Here is all the important vocabulary that we're going to discuss in this unit. Uh, genotype, make sure we're comfortable with that. Genotype, the root word there is gene. So, this is the certain alleles that make up an individual. For example, big T, big T, or little t, little t, or big T, little t. These would be one, two, three different kinds of palm trees. And uh, the actual genes that a person has is called their genotype. And then another term that we're going to toss at you is phenotype. Phenotype is the physical, so P for physical, so the physical appearance of a trait. For example, being tall, short, or also tall. And then also, as we have used these terms before, allele, which is a form of a trait. So again, you have two, one from mom, one from dad. So I'm going to put two here. You have two for every gene. A gene is a segment of DNA that determines a trait. A trait is what an organism looks or behaves like. So for example, I have brown hair, uh, brown eyes, I'm very loud and very energetic. All of those are traits of Mr. Herbst. And finally, genetics is the study of hereditary, heredity, and heredity is the passing of traits from parents to offspring. Anyway guys, that concludes our focus on genetics today. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.